Hello, everybody. Yes, it is good to be back. In case you missed it, I was in Las Vegas for the past uh, few days. Had a very good time. Thank you very much. And I think I you know, broke out even, okay, as far as my wages. Um, slightly under on my sports betting, but slightly over when it came to playing craps, blackjack, as well as roulette. So overall, a great time. And back in rainy Norman, Oklahoma, uh, getting ready for Oklahoma and TCU, the Sooners, you know, having the bye week and having one of the more interesting bye weeks in school history with everything that happened off the field. But now it's time to get back to on the field. Sooners and Horned Frogs, Saturday morning, 11 a.m. kickoff, ABC. Sooners are now an eight-point favorite to defeat the Horned Frogs. Third time in the past two seasons that these teams have met. Of course, at the beginning of the season, this particular matchup for this year was a very highly anticipated showdown because of how well both teams did a year ago. Sooners coming off a loss from Texas two weeks ago. For TCU, it has been Struggle City already. Three losses, and we're not even to Halloween yet for Gary Patterson's squad. But TCU will have home field advantage. Before I talk about the Oklahoma-TCU matchup in more depth, a couple of things on the Sooners' side. Number one, the college football playoff. Not too early to start talking about the playoff now. Matter of fact, the first playoff poll will be out soon, and the final playoff poll will be out in early December less than two months from now. So, yeah, time to start getting serious about the CFP. Now, talk about Oklahoma and the college football playoff. Do they have a shot at getting in the playoff? Absolutely they do. Absolutely. Remember last year, they had one loss um, after early October, just like this year, ran the table. That was good enough with a 12-1 record and a Big 12 title um, stapled to their resume to get in. Several things have to happen for Oklahoma to get to the playoffs. Number one, the Sooners, the one area that they can control. They got to win out. Okay, They have to win out, got to win these next six games, plus the Big 12 championship. And if that happens, that's in their favor. That's the one area that they can control. But no more losses, no more mulligans, no more margin for error. Another loss, cost of a playoff, that dream is done. It's finished history. Now, the other elements that I'm going to mention have to take place for Oklahoma as well. And these are the ones that they cannot control. Okay? For starters, they need to play Texas in the Big 12 championship game. It's got to be against Texas, a big name. That will help, plus an opportunity to get revenge. You can beat Texas the second time around in the Big 12 championship game. I'm not saying that eliminates losing to them the first time, but it would trump them beating uh, losing it, it would trump the uh, debacle that happened in early October so that would be in Oklahoma's favor another thing that has to happen for Oklahoma that they can't control Texas needs to be 11 and one just like Oklahoma would need to be 11 and one for this big 12 championship game to have national relevance to give it that power to give it that momentum 11 and one versus 11 and one Oklahoma Texas two big names and most likely the two teams um, are going to be in the top eight in the country, maybe even higher when they meet for the Big 12 championship game. So Texas, for Oklahoma, you need to hope that Texas doesn't lose from this moment onward. Because right now, the Sooners do not have a quality win. They don't. So that would be a big win there for the Sooners. And the fourth thing, and this is an area that you really cannot control, the Sooners need help from outside the Big 12. You know, a Clemson would need to lose. An Ohio State would need to lose. Notre Dame would definitely uh, need to lose. And Alabama, one loss for the Tide. I don't know if that's going to be enough to eliminate Alabama. They're that big of a name. But you definitely would need a Clemson, an Ohio State, or a Notre Dame loss culminated with an Oklahoma 12-1 and season and a Big 12 championship. Um, your chances would increase big time. If somebody else would lose outside of the Big 12, that's competing for the CFP, just like the Sooners. Another area to talk about before we dive into Oklahoma TCU, of course, the off week that was, which was a circus with Mike Stoops being fired, Ruffa McNeil being promoted to defensive coordinator for the rest of the season, Bob Diaco um, now being promoted to an outside linebacker coach. Now, do I think that because of what's happened recently with the changes Oklahoma's made defensively, that suddenly Oklahoma um, will change the scheme, change everything. Other than maybe running a little more four-man front, I don't think it's going to change much as far as the schematic part of it, okay? I think 
if there is going to be a change for the positive, maybe the Sooners play with a little more physicality, a little more firepower, get a little more mean, get physical. I mean, that's what Texas did to Oklahoma two weeks ago. Texas was a more physical team. Army was more physical than Oklahoma and almost beat the Sooners as a result. So maybe it's a change of attitude, a change in approach. You probably heard about the tweet not long after uh, Mike Stoops was let go from Bookie Radley Hiles about the fact that now they're playing for a coach that they love. Of course, he quickly deleted that tweet as soon as it was made public. But the bottom line is if what Bookie is saying, then maybe this defense plays a little bit more loose. Maybe this defense plays with a little more passion, and that never hurts. As far as schemes go, I, I can't foresee much of a change at all. doesn't mean you won't see it, but other than maybe running more four-man and less three-man front, um, I don't see a change much as, as far as the X's and O's element of it. It's kind of come for the Sooners in the form of being a more physical team because we haven't seen it that much recently. We definitely didn't see it against Texas um, just the Saturday before. OU facing a TCU offense that has been in a funk. Um, the Horned Frogs have lost three of their past uh, four games. Obviously a disappointing season for Gary Patterson's squad, which we knew in a way it would be a rebuilding year, but certainly did not expect them to already have three losses and we're not even past mid-October yet. So for Oklahoma, I think in a game like this, you have to be aware of Sean Robinson. Robinson um, – has not been 100%, has had to deal with a shoulder issue. And um, grant the fact that he accounted for a little more than 300 of their total yards in the loss of Texas Tech, uh, still a quarterback that is gutsy, a quarterback that will uh, play through anything. And keep in mind, too, that TCU still has Darius Anderson. Of course, they've got the ever-dangerous Kabate Turpin, so they still have game breakers. Um, two big problems for the Horned Frogs is just, you know, number one, consistency on the offensive side. Um, only averaging 16 points a game in Big 12 play. That's the worst. That's worse than Kansas as far as Big 12 play goes offensively. And number two, TCU has been turnover prone. This is where Oklahoma can try to take advantage. The Sooners themselves have created very few turnovers this year, but TCU has coughed it up um, 15 times already this year. That's two and a half turnovers per game, and their turnover margin is at minus nine. So sometimes TCU has shot themselves in the foot trying to move the ball Oklahoma trying to force those turnovers, and maybe we'll see the Sooners come with more pressure, make Sean Robinson uncomfortable. Now, when the Sooners have the ball offensively, again, you know, I, I mentioned this before, I mentioned it again. That loss to the Longhorns was not on the Sooners offense. Okay, you can't blame Kyler Murray, you can't blame those guys. 45 points, as I mentioned earlier, should have been enough to win that game. And fortunately for the Sooners, it wasn't. Um, TCU can still play defense, and I would imagine Gary Patterson is going to crank up that pressure against Kyler Murray. That's the only shot I think TCU has of winning this game is make Kyler Murray screw up. Okay, Make him throw earlier than he would like. Give him some different looks, but I think you've got to do whatever you can to try to make Kyler Murray uncomfortable. He's had a Heisman Trophy-like season. I don't know if he's going to win the Heisman. Tua uh, Tagovailoa is having a, a dream season. Hasn't thrown an interception yet. Kyler has thrown a few interceptions this year. I would imagine you will see Gary Patterson put a lot of pressure, especially from the outside, on Kyler Murray. This Oklahoma offense, I Tried to picture them scoring in the mid-40s in this game. Probably won't happen, but still, with Oklahoma's weapons, with having the bye week, you know, getting 14 days to prepare for this game, I've got to imagine the Sooners will still be effective offensively and will score in the low to mid-30s. My final thoughts in this game, I'm not projecting an Oklahoma blowout, okay? Playing on the road, still trying to figure things out. I do think TCU will give Oklahoma a game, but in the end, the Sooners are going to have way too many answers, and I don't think TCU's offense is going to be able to keep up. I'm going to go 34-20. 34-20, Sooners will cover the spread, get back on the winning track, and after this game, hey, the Sooners get three of their next four games at home. A major plus there. Sooners haven't been at home, by the way, in about a month. Of course, a reminder that the Sooners will play Kansas State the week after the TCU game. And we do know that the OU Kansas State kickoff will be at 2.30. But the Oklahoma TCU game is another early kickoff, 11 a.m. Uh, just a reminder, my three picks will, will come later on today on this very same webpage. Quinn and I 
will once again pick three games nationally against the spread. Again, good to be back. Um, Vegas was fun. We can only stay so long there. If I stayed any longer, probably go Brook. <laughs> so Sooners and the Horned Frogs. We'll see if the Sooners can get back on the winning streak. Boomer Sooner.